Okay, so in this part we are going to start our texturing process. You can see that I've put some colors uh, on our weapon and I will use these colors to uh, bake our uh, masks or IDs, however you want to call this. Uh, this is how this texture looks with our colors and I will use this as a mask, uh, ID mask. And of course this one is uh, 4096 pixels resolution, so it's pretty big. And for the uh, first part of the texturing process I will use Didu. You can google some uh, basic tutorials of course. And I always use Didu just for uh, beginning. Uh, it's very good uh, small program for creating base textures with some scratches or with some dirt. And after doing this uh, I just manually uh, adjust my textures, I add details, uh, etc. So now you can see I've add our mesh, ID map, normal map and ambient occlusion map. And I've set calibration profile to uh, Unreal Engine 4 because we are going to put our weapon into this engine. So it's pretty important. Of course you can set a path and right now I select what kind of layers, uh, what kind of maps we are going to generate. So I unchecked metalness and albedo for metalness because I was thinking that this might be a little bit too advanced so I've just stick with albedo, a basic albedo. A gloss texture, ambient occlusion texture and normal map texture. And then you can create uh, textures and before doing this you are able to uh, go into some options of your ID map and pick different materials yeah, for different colors so you can assign a specific material uh, to a specific color. It sometimes works and sometimes not and the program is a little bit unstable sometimes. Uh, the one thing you should keep in mind that the colors on your ID map should be uh, really different. I have some colors that might look similar, m might have uh, similar values so the program uh, wasn't recognizing sometimes what's going on. Okay, so after assigning our basic materials to the colors, we can hit create and the program will create all these maps. So you can see we have some tabs on the top 
of the Photoshop with different textures, uh, normal map, albedo, uh, gloss texture, and ambient occlusion. So right now you can see I've launched a tree do. This is a little program for a preview. We can preview how our mesh is looking with the textures. So right now we can see our uh, weapon with uh, just normal map and ambient occlusion map applied. You can change lighting in 3D. You can choose different HDR images. And I'd like to choose uh, this one with which is uh, non which is without any kind of color because uh, if the HDR image have some kind of yellow tint for example it just might affect your uh, textures and it's better to, to not have this kind of effects. So when we are ready, we can hit create uh, smart material. I choose a gun material. This is a very basic material. In Didu, uh, you can see that we have uh, lots of pre-made materials that are really great for starting. So you can see our gun material was applied for uh, the model and right now I'm choosing a, a mask that will be a assigned to this shader. And of course I'm not sure why but it didn't work the way I was expecting it. So I've opened the, the mask editor and you see I'm trying to link this layer with uh, the, the correct mask. And now we can see that our gun uh, material was applied only for the parts where it should be so these little details uh, have right now a black material So you can see how many materials we can use with uh, different options. So I was looking for something for a main part of the weapon. So let's see how this one is looking. So this one also was applied for uh, the, the weapon. And you can see we've got lots of uh, s scratches and lots of dirt on the surface. Uh, 
so I choose the next material uh, military base material So this one is pretty good material. Our weapon looks pretty realistic with this one and I will apply this only for the main part of the the weapon. So I've deleted this material that we created before and right now I will just apply a mask. So you can see that this time when I pick a certain mask it works without any problem I didn't have to open a mask editor and linking the the colors to a material everything is okay and right now we are saving all maps so let's assign another material for the for the other parts of the weapon so I've speed up this part a little bit Of course I was looking for a material that will be good. And I've decided to choose this one that we have deleted previously. Of course we will make some adjustments to this material. But I think it's pretty okay. So you can see I was trying to edit these scratches because they were pretty heavy. I was trying to make them less visible. So you can see these scratches are looking pretty okay, but I still think they are too heavy for for our weapon. So you can see I turn them off completely, but still we have lots of dirt and this wa was caused by the sand layer so I was always 
uh, also checking how this looks without this layer. So also I was trying to uh, decrease the, the this mask, decrease a visibility of this uh, sound dirt. So this uh, looks pretty okay to me. The amount of dirt and details is relatively good. And I also wanted to assign this material to only some parts of the weapon. And it also somehow didn't work at first, so I had to choose the color on the mask ID so right now you can see we have this material applied So you can see I've created the same material for this middle part of the weapon and right now I just want to change some colors. So right now I'm choosing the a little bit yellow yellowish color for this main part of the weapon. And at first I wasn't sure what kind of colors I, I want to use. So I've done some tests. So you can see I've opened the, the Explorer and I'm looking for some references because I really wasn't sure what kind of colors we should do for this weapon. I have of course tons of references and I have some basic ideas but I just want to open some images. So this one was pretty cool, I like the colors, maybe they are a little bit too dark, but we will do something similar. 
<coughs> so you can see I'm making all my colors a little bit darker and less uh, saturated. Of course all these colors we can change later uh, manually in Photoshop uh, rather than uh, making adjustments to these uh, dedo layers. <coughs> So I wasn't worried really about the final result that we have here in the 3 do preview. I was just trying to make something that looks relatively okay. So right now I was trying to add some scratches to this dark uh, metal. So I've added another layer uh, called Dusty Metal and we have to create a mask for these scratches. So I choose something like Top Fumes and we have to make some adjustments to this because I want them to be a little bit more visible and of course I would like to break them a little bit with some texture because they are really really straight lines sometimes <coughs> so you can see I choose a concrete texture to break these straight white lines a little so Didu is, is very good program for doing uh, things like that we can really quickly generate some beard masks some scratch masks and stuff like this It would take us a very, very long time to create this manually. Of course, these kind of results that we can see right now are not the final results. We will do a little bit manual work around this, but it's a very good uh, starting point for making our textures. So right now I was trying to add for another part a material. I wasn't sure which one. I wanted something that looks more like a plastic. Uh,
so you can see unfortunately this uh, plastic material was applied for uh, the weapon for all the, the parts of the weapon and I wanted only for for few of them this kind of material right now I was trying to make this uh, noise on the surface of this material a little bit less visible so the surface will be a little bit smooth smoother so that's better but I was trying to assign this material to the ID that we've generated from Maya but unfortunately I wasn't able to do this and this was probably because this ID was color was pretty close to another ID color which I use for the black metal and it just didn't work Some, something didn't work so I g gave up this this material so like I said on the beginning we should really be sure at the beginning that our mask that we are generating for the IDs have a really different colors so you can see for this part I have this light gray and for the black metal I have a darker color and something just didn't work anyway we can fix this manually creating this material for example for uh, the for for all parts of the weapon and manually uh, create a mask in photoshop so it, it's not a big problem of course So uh, for now I've just turned off this layer and we will move just forward. And of course I was trying to add a little material for a little part that looks more like a silver, like a polished metal or something like this. and this part is uh, somewhere around the barrel so this one wasn't good it was a little bit too dark and I didn't like the texture
and you can see uh, the IT mask for the silver works pretty okay. for the silver mask ID I had this light very light gray color so the program didn't have any problems with reading this so maybe it didn't look like a silver but we will work on this part also Okay, so right now you can see that I have still my layers in Photoshop and I just want to select on our mask uh, one material because I would like to change a color of this. I thought that I would just select a part of this on my mask and make some adjustments but of course we have all these layers generated by Dido and they work pretty okay so uh, we can use these layers to tweak colors and some of the details that Dido generated so you can see I've been able to double click on this layer and pick the color that I want to use so <coughs> so we have all these controls are still available <coughs> we can also experiment a little bit with this pattern overlay but the results were a little bit poor so I was just continuing uh, our texturing process you can see that we can make all these adjustments like in decreasing opacity and adding details to our masks and or deleting the some scratches etc so like i said uh, at the beginning i'm using mainly dido for generating this kind of uh, basic textures and I'm just opening the layers that Dido generated and I'm, I manually add a really fine small details or some additional textures so right now you can see that I've changed the color of the scratches on this part of the weapon I think it will be more uh, interesting with uh, darker metal below this uh, green paint of course you can see I still have a tree do open and I'm, I want to see uh, my results in tree do so we can hit a refresh button in Dido and of course everything works fine of course we have to be really careful with these layers in the Photoshop because if we will destroy something there we might have some problems but if we are making just small adjustments not deleting these layers or, or doing something other with, with them it should be fine so you can see I've selected a mask for this layer this, this is a scratch layer 
and we are able of course to make some some scratches of course uh, this is just a preview and my scratches are, are pretty ugly right now but it, it's just to give you the idea that these layers are there and even after closing video we can make uh, pretty good adjustments uh, on our own with Photoshop and everything will work fine. Of course if we make some adjustments to this layer, this mask layer uh, in albedo texture, we also have to make these adjustments uh, into a gloss texture for example. Of course uh, we in this case we can just duplicate uh, the mask into a gloss uh, layer and everything will be okay so this part of the creation process will be a, a really more traditional because we are doing everything without using Didu or we are using Didu right now just to uh, make a preview. So you can see I keep adding these metal scratches. Okay, so I wanted to preview my results in 3D. So again, click refresh uh, icon. course I've made some unwanted glitches but you can see we can easily remove this because this is just a mask and not a, a normal layer So I really wasn't sure if I'm getting my details in 3D, so I've made this little big uh, T letter on the side of the weapon. And yes, uh, everything works fine, so probably my adjustments were so small that I, I'm not able to see them. So you can see on the top of this weapon that I finally found my scratches. And you can see right now that I've switched to gloss layer because I want to duplicate this mm, adjusted mask to my a gloss texture and of course at the beginning I was figuring out how this uh, texture works in the gloss texture 
you see of course that we have to change the color So I'm looking right now for these scratches on the gloss layer and let's save it and see if we can see any changes in 3D. And yes of course there is a very small effect but it works. So you can see right now I've created another layer and I will set this layer to an overlay and I will make some very subtle adjustments to the surface of this part. And what I will do, I will just add a little bit of brightness on the surface. So the, the edges will be a little bit darker and I'm doing this because I don't want the surface to be that kind of flat. This will add just a little bit of depth to the texture. So you can see right now I've switched to uh, the layer where we have our dirt mask or dirt layer and I'm just removing some parts of this dirt. There are some kind of straight lines that I don't like. Uh, barely visible but they they were so you can see for each material we have a separate group so it's pretty easy to navigate between these layers so when you have a lot of materials it might be scary at the beginning because uh, Dido is really generating tons of these layers. So right now I'm just making some adjustments to this black material and I wanted this black material layer a little bit uh, brighter. I don't want a hundred percent black material here.
So you can see on this black material we have tons of uh, white uh, scratches. We can of course add them to our texture. So the same thing uh, like with the previous material we can easily make adjustments. Of course again these are my scratches are pretty bad right now but we will improve them later this is just to show you that it can be done pretty quickly and easy Of course this part was pretty difficult for me because uh, the screen resolution is uh, very small and the texture are huge and I have my brush options, my layers, my preview so it was pretty difficult to work this way. So you can see we are able to make some adjustments around these screws. So again I was trying to check if changing the pattern options will do something but the result is barely visible so Okay, so you can see I've chosen another brush and I was adding some some scratches here. Okay, and we are moving forward to uh, another layer. And I also wanted to change the color of this a little bit.
so you can see that I refresh our preview and right now we can see how these colors are coming together on this weapon. So I've switched to the gloss texture and I wanted to make it a little bit more brighter to see what kind of effect I will get. So it looks not bad. Of course I will be adding a lot of details manually in Photoshop, so I think for this part of the weapon uh, work with uh, Dido is almost finished. Of course at the beginning I will be adjusting my albedo and previewing this albedo in Maya rather than in 3D. And after finishing albedo, I will just adjust the gloss texture and maybe normal maps a little bit. So, one more thing I want to show you right now is let's say for example we want to add a little bit more dirt to the the model of this weapon so it's like covered with some dust or the the sand or something like this we can pretty easy turn on dido and go back to our layers and add another layer without any problems So I was trying to add a uh, smart material, but unfortunately we have to just add, add just a material uh, rather than smart material. And I choose the, the sand at the beginning. Uh, let's see what result we are going to get. So all the surface of the weapon is covered with this sand, it's pretty heavy right now and what we have to do is just create another mask and it, it is already a mask called a sand so I'm going to choose this one because it, it works just best for this kind of effect. So this kind of detail like the dust or the sound will pretty nicely blend all parts of the weapon together. So it, it's starting to look some, somehow, but the effect is still pretty too heavy. 
we have to scale down the material a little bit. So I was trying to choose a different material for this sound effect. But this one was worst, so I go back to the previous. So we just have to uh, scale down our details. And the minus three was a little bit too much in my opinion. And we have this uh, ugly normal map, I think, going on on the surface, which I don't like. I would like to have just a smooth dust effect. But this upper part uh, looks pretty nice, I think. So you can see I went to a normal map and take down the texture intensity. And I was experimenting with the scale of the texture. So I still did don't like the, the noise on this sound texture. There is too much black dots on, on, on the sound. So you can see right now this everything looks better because I switched to this dread mood. I switched just the material to a, a dread mood, dried mood. So anyway, everything looks pretty cool. The sound or the dust is very smooth and clean. And maybe it's too much of it, but we can of course adjust this. And we can adjust it using just Dido or we can just switch to, to Photoshop and manually tweak uh, the mask. So you can see in Photoshop we have our uh, mood texture on the top of the layer list. So this is this one and we can go and select mask and adjust this. 
I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I'm just going to show you that it's possible to to make some changes manually. So you can see we can add a little bit of dust around these screws which looks pretty cool. So as I said, uh, I think that the effect was a little bit too intensive, so I've turned down opacity a little bit. So let's save everything and see how it looks in a 3D. So it looks really okay. So you can see that in a relatively short period of time we've been able to generate a very good textures using 3D. Of course if we are looking for something more polished or let's say a, a main character weapon we should definitely spend more time and manually adjust the textures, adding some fine details. Of course I will make some adjustments to this barrel part because this front part it doesn't look, look like a metal, it's just white right now. I really like this dust coming between these parts. So I think that's it for this part of the tutorial.